Cybersecurity continues to be an increasing concern for the federal government, particularly with a larger remote workforce to manage than in the past. Changes in the distributed nature of IT networks makes it even more critical to stay ahead of newer threats like ransomware and spyware. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group and joining us to talk about the importance of reprioritizing mobile device security to establish a more secure network uh, security posture is Tony D'Angelo, Vice President for Public Sector at Lookout. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Wyatt, good to be with you today. So can you explain uh, in more detail how things like spyware and uh, is changing uh, the nature of security and why agency leaders really should be concerned about their mobile network device security posture in particular? Sure, I'm happy to. So uh, let's start with, with Pegasus, which has gotten a lot of press over the years. Um, Pegasus is arguably the most advanced spyware in the world. And um, you may have heard about a recent attack on U.S. diplomats in Uganda. Um, so yet again, another instance of a Pegasus rearing its head. So uh, while it's been out there for a number of years, it's, uh, there, there's high utility in that spyware and it continues to be used again and again. Um, I, I think that you know, one of the scariest things about this um, is it can be, it, first of all, it can be deployed on iOS and Android. So it's quite versatile. Um, you can extract highly accurate GPS coordinates photos, emails, messages, all this can be done through applications like such as, as WhatsApp and Signal. Um, additionally, which you know, is, is quite disturbing is, is the, the spyware can turn on the microphone, can turn on the camera, can listen into phone calls. So it's, uh, there, there's high utility and high value in, in, the, uh, in the, the spyware itself and, and what the, um, the threat actor can potentially extract through using it. Uh, and all this, the, and what's even even provides more utility is the it can all be done through zero click. So just by the nature of having, for example, the two apps that I, I mentioned previously, um, there isn't any additional user involvement that would be required to enact the spyware. It could all be done through that. Um, aside from things like Pegasus, which uh, which are quite versatile, most of the other attacks that we see. Um, from a spyware perspective, or do have some user involvement. A lot of those come through phishing attacks. Most of the time that would be credential harvesting. So it might be uh, for SMS text, it might be through social media, something where the user is gonna, uh, is gonna be tricked into clicking on a link and enter a username and a password. So in those cases, the, the, the threat actor may not be desiring to extract data from the mobile device itself, although that is certainly an option. Oftentimes, again, it's for credential harvesting to, uh, to give them the ability to enter into other systems and, and, uh, and create other damage. Well, certainly compounding concerns is the fact that the pandemic has driven most workers home, creating a higher demand to use mobile devices for everyday business. So what should security leaders be paying attention to in light of those changes? Yeah, it's, it's a lot to think about. Um, you know, uh, I think a lot of these changes were underway prior to the, print, to the pandemic. There's a lot of desire to work from home and just the explosion of mobile devices has created this desire to access uh, you know, government data and systems from a mobile device. So we're already heading that way, but the pandemic accelerated it and, and put a lot of agencies into uncomfortable positions where they probably weren't quite prepared for, um, for the pace at which it was moving. Uh, mobile security, for the most part, has been uh, fairly far down the priority list for a lot of agencies, and, and I would even uh, expand that into the, the private sector as well. Uh, MTD, mobile threat defense, really enjoys about a 30% market penetration, so there's a lot of devices out there, so if you look at it from that perspective, uh, you know, 7 out of 10 devices have no security whatsoever. Um, MDM, Mobile Device Manager, is often confused with MTD. They're not exclusive. They work well together. So a Mobile Device Manager is also a highly desirable and, and, and recommended tool for, for a mobile device, does not provide the level of security that, that many people think it does. Um, you, can provide, you, know, you can provide some level of access control and, and managing the device itself. Uh, but in terms of other more pervasive threats like uh, phishing, um, MTD also can provide content protection, uh, protection uh, of, uh, of, of vulnerable or malicious apps. So there can be app scanning, things of that nature, which, which Lookout does. Uh, and also um, 
uh, network-based attacks. So if uh, you, know, you think about the airport, free Wi-Fi or coffee shop or some of those unsecured wireless networks and somebody trying to go about their, their government business or their private sector business on a mobile device, uh, all those things can be um, all those threats can be mitigated with the use of NPD. Additionally, while mobile threat defense solutions like Lookout don't um, uh, close the gaps in operating system um, uh, operating systems and any security flaws, we can identify when there are some and encourage the user through and, and the administrators through profile setting to upgrade those uh, or, or, or to put some policy around those, uh, the device access if there's a weak or outdated OS in place. So you can force the user to update their operating system. So all those things are, um, are, are quite helpful in mitigating the, the mobile attacks above and beyond what a mobile device manager can do. Um, so I think those are, those are the primary reasons why uh, I think MDN, MTD should really be considered for, for these uh, devices across the public sector. Appreciate your laying that out for us. So next then, what kind of security capabilities should security leaders really consider in order to elevate mobile security uh, as part of their existing security strategies? Yeah, there's a very popular term going on inside the government these days called zero trust. And I think first and foremost, uh, um, that is, uh, should be top of mind for any, uh, any agency. Uh, zero trust is a lot of things to a lot of people, but I, I think fundamentally it's a it's a movement. It's not a thing. It's it's a movement. It's a it's a vision. It's something that we're going to strive towards. And really, what this means, it's not trusting the user, the device that they're on, the network that they're using, or even their behavior inside the network, what they're doing with the data in terms of data protection. So it's all of those elements together. So you think about. Um, you know, multi-factor authentication, or you think about um, different um, uh, um, access controls that are put in place, those are all important and valid, but Zero Trust really looks at um, continuous conditional access, not just a one-time trust of the, of the user or what that user is doing, but it's continuous across all of those, those four elements that I mentioned. So with that, um, there are a couple of different solutions that, that should be considered as part of a zero trust architecture. Really, um, any endpoint protection is, is going to be important, whether it's desktop or mobile, as we've been talking about. In addition to that, um, different cloud security solutions. There's a, a, a category called SASE, S-A-S-E, soon to be renamed SSE, which is Secure Service Edge. Uh, there are three primary technologies under that umbrella. Uh, that many of our listeners have probably heard of. One is CASB, that would be cloud security for commercial cloud applications. ZTNA, which would be cloud security protection for um, uh, legacy apps. And then Secure Web Gateway would be for you know, your traditional web browsing. And, uh, and really it, the, the, the thought here is uh, it's zero trust architecture but it's, it's data protection and, and using all those elements of con continuous conditional access. And then I think the other thing that which we're seeing a lot of, uh, get a lot of interest in the public sector as well is, is EDR, endpoint detection and response. So this is, uh, I think of it as cybersecurity uh, experts going from playing defense to playing offense. So you get into threat hunting and you get into some predictive analytics and how to avert threats before they, they come through the front door or the back door for that matter. Um, and then really, I think just the, 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 the thought of is truly an endpoint to cloud mentality. Um, so mobile device, uh, desktop endpoint, all the way up through to including the, all of the, the cloud apps and, and the cloud security solutions. Uh, it also um, makes me think of the uh, executive order uh, that the White House put out back in May of last year around zero trust. And, uh, and, and to try to drive all the agencies towards a zero trust architecture. This, this uh, effectively produces a, a great technical blueprint for somebody driving towards zero trust. There have been a couple of great documents that have been put out that uh, different agencies can, can use as a guideline. Um, CISA and NIST got together and, and put an architecture document together and DISA and the NSA did the same. So there are some, some wonderful uh, documents out there that can really provide that, the blueprint and walk everybody through all the key elements of zero trust and how to implement those types of solutions. Uh, finally, Tony, uh, what other federal guidelines can help agency leaders really create a a clearer strategy around mobile security. Sure. 
Um, in addition to the executive order on zero trust put up by the White House last year, the um, OMB put out three additional directives that are all quite valuable and, and fall well into the, the zero trust architecture thought process. Um, the first is uh, M22-01, which is, we talked about EDR, that's endpoint detection and response. Uh, that is, um, um, this is, this. the nice thing about this is, is more of a mandate now. This is, instead of just saying, you know, we should think about EDR, it's really directing all the agencies to, to look at uh, uh, advanced threat detection and, and threat hunting. The second is uh, M21-30, which talks about maintaining critical software. And there've been some, some very public exploits around uh, critical software in the, in the government lately. So I think that they're, uh, they're doing a really good job of trying to put some controls around that. And the third is uh, M21-31, which is improving incident response. So identifying a threat, how do they react? Um, and then putting a, an entire set of policies and procedures around that. So all those are, are, are great directives. Uh, I would encourage everybody to, you know, to, to go look at those. I'm sure most of the agencies are, are well deep into them. But uh, I think, uh, again, all of these things, whether they're coming out from the White House or OMB or the guidelines that NIST has, has been coming out with, um, all around zero trust. Mobile is mentioned in, in, in many of these uh, or, or certainly at a minimum endpoints as a whole are mentioned, which you know, would certainly include the mobile endpoint. So we're encouraged to see the, uh, the aggressive tactics here taken by uh, the public sector and uh, around uh, you know, these, uh, these very advanced and dangerous cyber threats that we face today. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for um, you know, pointing out those specific examples and how they can improve mobile security. And uh, thank you overall, uh, Tony and the Angelo for just really joining us today to you know, share the, uh, some of the key things that agencies can be doing and the importance of reprioritizing mobile device security to establish a, a more secure network posture. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Wyatt. Good to be with you.